Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Please click on the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. Hey guys, in this session we are going to talk about Elastic IPs. So Elastic IPs helps you to maintain a static IP address for your EC2 instances. So by default, whenever you launch your EC2 instances, your instance will get a public IP address and a private IP address. So when you stop and start your instance again, the IP address will be lost and a new IP address will be allocated. Now this can be a problem when you're uh, hosting a web application which is running behind a DNS. So you, you might um, um, map the public IP address with your DNS resolver. So every time you uh, stop and start your server, the IP address keeps changing and that can become a problem when you're accessing the application or maybe you are sharing that server with your um, colleagues within your project. So every time you stop and start the server, the IP address keeps changing and you will need to keep on notifying the um, uh, people about mm -hmm. the change so that they can access the server. So to overcome this problem, we have this Elastic IP, which will help you to maintain a static IPv4 address that can be assigned for dynamic cloud computing. So in that case, no matter what happens to your instance, whether you stop or you start the server, it will maintain the same IP address. So you can make use of this Elastic IP address in place of the public IP that is assigned by AWS to have the same IP address irrespective of the state of the instance. Whether it is stopped or it is running, it will maintain the same IP address. Now with this Elastic IP address, you can also mask the failure of your application. So maybe let's say you have instance one and in that instance you're running, running a Tomcat application and due to some issue, your application is not running as expected or your instance went down. So what I can do is I can spin up a new instance, deploy the application again and map it to the same IP address. So that will help me in overcoming the uh, issue where you know people are not able to access my application. So by default, with your elastic with your aws account you are mm -hmm. limited to five elastic ips per region because there is a scarce public resource for your elastic ips now coming to the cost when your instance is running and if you attach an elastic ip address there is no charge for the elastic ip so as long as the ip is attached to a running instance there is no cost but if you stop or you terminate the instance and the elastic ip is not attached to a running instance, you will be charged. And you're only uh, not charged for the first Elastic IP address. And if you're going to attach multiple Elastic IP address to a single instance, you will be charged. So in a way, you're not charged when you're using the Elastic IP and you will be charged when you're not using the Elastic IP. So let's see an example here. I'm going to launch an instance uh, I'll be launching a public instance. So let's select my Amazon Linux AMI. We'll go with my instance type and we'll go with the default network and we'll have the default storage, my security group and we'll review and launch this instance. So just an example instance that I'm launching. Now let's wait for this instance to come up. So as of now, this is in the pending status and here is my public IP address. So whenever you launch your instance, if it is running in the public subnet, you'll get a public IP address and a private IP address. Now let's wait for this instance to change to the running status. And I'll show you what exactly I mean by the instance will lose the IP address when I stop and restart the server. So my instance is running now and uh, this is the IP address. So let me just copy and uh, save it so that I can compare and uh, show you the IP addresses. So this is the first IP address that I have. Now let me stop this instance. So here I'll go and stop this instance. Now when you stop this instance by default, the public IP that you have assigned or the public IP that you have got for your EC2 instance will be lost. It will no longer be available. So let's wait for this status to change to stopped and then I'll show you the IP address. Um, I'm waiting for this to stop. So my instance is stopped here. And now if you look at here, my public IP address is gone. 
the IP address is no longer available. And let me start this instance again. Now what will happen is a new public IP will be assigned to the instance. Now this can cause a problem like I mentioned when you are running an application or if you are sharing the server with multiple users it can be a problem. So this is the new IP address that has been attached. So I get two different IP addresses when I stop and start the server. So to overcome this we have the elastic IP which will help to maintain the same IP address irrespective of the state of the instance. Even if I stop and start the instance again it will maintain the same IP address. So for this you'll need to first create the elastic IP. So to create your elastic IP you can scroll down here and you'll find elastic IPs and click on allocate elastic IP. Uh, this will be the region which is North Virginia and we are going to use the Amazon's pool of IP addresses and click on allocate. And this will create an elastic IP and uh, here you can see at associated instance ID it is bl uh, blank meaning it is not attached with any instance. So you will need to attach this if you don't attach you will be charged you will need to pay money for this. So to attach this go to actions and associate elastic IP and you can select your instance. So we are going with the instance and here you should see the instance that we are running. Click on associate and the elastic IP is now attached. So here you can see it shows the associated instance ID and uh, this is the elastic IP address ending with 105. Now if I go back to my instances and uh, if I refresh this page you, you should be able to see the elastic IP address which is ending with 105. Now if I stop this instance it will not impact my public IP address. It will maintain the same IP address. My public IP address will not be lost. So let's wait for this to um, stop. I'm waiting for this to change to the stopped status so that I can show you the elastic IP. So now my instance is stopped and if you see here I still have the public IP address. My public IP address is not lost. And if I start this instance again it will have the same IP address. So my IP address remains the same. So this is what your elastic IP uh, address does and even if you um, even if the server is completely lost I can launch a new server and simply attach this elastic IP address to the new server so that my IP address will not change even though my server is changing I would still have the same IP address for my EC2 instances. So this is what your elastic IP address does it helps you to maintain a static IP address for your EC2 instances that will not change. Uh, irrespective of the state of your EC2 instances whether it is running or it is stopped it would have the same IP address and it can also be used to mask the failure of your EC2 instances so you can quickly launch a new server and map the elastic IP address to the new EC2 instance so here my instance is uh, starting and you can see I still have the same IP address that's your elastic IP and my instance has changed to the running status with the same IP address. That's how your elastic IP address works and from your cost point of view as long as it is attached to a running instance there's no cost but uh, if you if you don't associate it with your instance you'll be charged. So at any point of time once you're done working with this to remove the elastic IPs you can go to elastic IPs and you will need to first dissociate the elastic IP. So select the elastic IP go to actions and dissociate elastic IP address dissociate and then you will need to go and release the elastic IP until you don't release it you will be charged. So click on release elastic IP and this will basically delete or basically put the elastic IP back to Amazon's pool of IP address. So that's about your elastic IP address that's all I have for this session. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.